Hello friends, welcome back. Hope you're doing well. And if you're new here, I'm Jim. Thanks for stopping by. Today I'm in On One Photo Raw 2023, and this is another video in my beginner's guide, kind of quick start guides to getting started with this very powerful app. I've already covered kind of a overall getting started video as well as a video about the develop tab. Today we're talking about effects and all the different kind of tools that are available to you on the effects tab. And as the name implies, effects is kind of like filters, right, basically. So um, there's a lot of things you can do. And to be clear, I'm not going to go through all the different filters. There's just way too many. I highly recommend that you download their user guide and check that out. But also, there's just a lot here that you need to be aware of in terms of how you can use these tools. That's what we're covering. Let's go ahead and get started. I have this photo that started like that. I did crop it, of course, but it was a little bit darker and I brightened it. Um, and so I did that on develop and that's it. Now I'm on the effects tab. And as I said, it's about adding filters. So of course you want to add a filter. Now a really key thing to think about, be aware of, learn about all that kind of stuff is masking. And that's going to come into play here. And you may know already about super select AI and mask AI. I'm not going to dive into those in depth, nor am I going to dive into masking in depth because that's just really a, a big, big topic. That's going to need to be another video or maybe a few videos, to be honest. Uh, I'm just going to assume that you kind of know what masking is and I'm going to touch on it, but I, I don't want to imply that we're going to dive deep here because we're not, because there's other, um, a lot of other things here in filters that we can talk about. So of course, in order to add a filter, the first thing you want to do is add filter. And when you click on that, the menu pops up. Now you can notice here that as you hover over these, it gives you a description about kind of what, and an example image of kind of what it does. There's also a search bar here. So if you're like, um, I really want a monochrome. Where's monochrome? You can type monochrome and as you start to type it, it'll come up and say antique or black and white. Those are the two filters that would give you a monochrome look. So something to be aware of. Um, also, this is where mask AI comes into play, which as you know, or maybe you don't know, but if you don't know, it basically identifies regions in the photo and automatically creates a mask uh, for them and lets you choose them. And so mask lets you selectively apply whatever you're doing with that filter to that specific part of the photo. That's an incredibly powerful tool that's a, a critical component of getting a nice result. No matter what tool you're using, whether you're an on one or another tool, using masking is a key skill. Well, they make it really easy with mask AI. So in this case, as you can see, um, by the way, you can pick all if you want it to apply what I call globally or across the entire photo or none. Um, but in this case, I'm going to choose man-made ground as I hover over this uh, section or this, this name and this little radio button, it highlights what area is being selected. So yeah, I'm going to go ahead and choose man-made ground. I'm going to click that. As I hover over flora, you can see that's being highlighted. Yeah, I want that. Natural ground, yeah, I want that. Sky, I don't want sky, I'm gonna skip that. But mountain, yeah, I want mountain, you see that's red. And boom, I've kinda got it all covered, right? That's mostly, now the mask is not perfect and in future videos I'll talk about refining it. I'll touch on it a little bit here. But let's say I wanna add a little bit of crunch, a little bit of punch, and um, one of the things I like to use is dynamic contrast. And you can see in the description there, it says it adds clarity, also known as tonal contrast, to your photo, making it pop. That sounds like exactly what I want to do because that's a landscape and a road. So I'm going to hit a dynamic contrast and it will apply the filter. And you'll see it opens up the filter and it applies the basic default settings here. And so it defaults to medium and large being a 15 and a 20 and small detail being um, a zero. So just to make it a little bit more visible, I'm going to bump these numbers up so you can see it better. I, I wouldn't use it that high. This is just for visibility for you. Now, every tool or filter is going to have its own sliders. And that's why I said I can't go through all, I think there's 30 or 31 filters. I won't be going through all of those in this video or really any video. I recommend experimenting, checking them out, playing around, but they're all going to have their own sliders and things like that. But there's some common DNA across all of these in terms of how things work. The first thing is there's an opacity slider. And so the opacity is basically how much of what you're doing is showing on the photo. At 100, you're getting 100% of the effect. And of course, if you drag this to zero, none of it is showing up. And so 
that's uh, that's basically zero opacity. It's completely hidden. Um, I generally stay at 100, and then I adjust accordingly to suit my taste or season to taste with whatever sliders are in the filter that I'm using. But there are times when I'll say, you know, gosh, I like that, but it's, eh, it's a little too much. Let me pull back the opacity. And so maybe you go down to 75 or something, and that looks a little bit better. So that's something to keep uh, in mind. There's an opacity slider on all of these filters. Great power, great control, great flexibility in terms of how you can apply this stuff to your photo. Now, another common thing across these filters are these kind of uh, what I call presets or looks that are kind of built in. And instead of doing my own stuff uh, and moving these sliders, I could use one of these pre-built looks and just click on that. So I could say, I want surreal, and you can see all these numbers and all that adjusted. I want soft, well, it adjusted differently. I want natural, you know, it's again, everything kind of just, uh, it has its own settings. Now, you can also click here and get more options, or if you create one that you really like, you can save your own style and it'll be available to you in the future. Now, one of the cool things about it, it by the way, you can just click on the filter name to open it or to close it. And um, one of the cool things is you can use the same filter time and time again. And that's actually what I'm gonna do here. Something that I commonly do with dynamic contrast is apply a positive dynamic contrast to like earth or streets or cities, things like that. But in this case, I'm gonna go and I'm gonna say sky with a mask AI, and I'm gonna get dynamic contrast, and it's gonna to fall to the default settings, but I'm gonna go the other way. I'm just gonna go negative. Uh, that's just all it's gonna do is soften it up. Something I like to do to sky and waters, uh, skies and water, just a personal preference. Um, the point was really more so that you can use the same tool again and again because um, it doesn't matter, right? I could go get another version of dynamic contrast and another one and another one, and I could be masking it into different parts of the photo if I wanted these settings in that section and you know something different on the road and something different on the mountains and something different on the sky. I could just use dynamic contrast again and again and again. Um, as I said, you can click on that to close that. You can also click on the filter name and drag it and when you see that white line, that's gonna show you where it's gonna go. So you'll notice now, the, uh, these are the masking icons. We're gonna, we're gonna get into masking in a second. But these masking icons, you can see, that one's got the white on the top and the black on the bottom. And the one on top has the white on the bottom and the black on the top. I could drag that down here, and now it's reversed, right? So you can move these around in the stack if you want to. And there's one other thing to be aware of. If you're in solo mode, you're only able to have a single filter open at a time. So you can see that when I go to this next filter and click on that, it opens that one and it closes the other one. That's because I'm in what's called solo mode. So go to window and check solo mode. If I uncheck it, what happens is I've got this one open. If I wanna go open this tool uh, or filter this instance of it, you can see it opens, but the other one's open as well. And so if you have a lot of filters and you're not in solo mode and you're going back and forth, maybe you want it that way, it's a personal preference, but you end up with having to scroll a lot because you'll have all these filters open. I personally prefer to be in solo mode. Go to window, click on solo mode, and that means only one filter is open at a time. So let me go back to this one, and I wanna talk about a couple of other things here, and that is uh, in the upper right-hand side, you've got an X. If you click the X, that deletes this filter. If you hit that little uh, kind of semicircular arrow, as you can see it, as I hover, it says reset. That's gonna reset your settings on this filter back to the, uh, whatever their defaults are. And this little gear icon gets you into the blending mode option. So I'm gonna click on that and it opens another little menu. If I close that, if you take a look, there's opacity and then here's those preset styles. But when I click on the gear icon in between those two, right, there's opacity and there's the preset styles. There's this section here for blending modes. So blending modes is basically, it tells this filter how to blend with the other filters that are in the stack. I will admit, I don't really use blending modes a whole lot, except when I'm applying a texture. I am certain there are users out there that say, hey, well, I use uh, blend modes for this or that, and there, there are definitely use cases for it. I just don't really come across them in terms of how I edit, but it's there and it's very powerful. And if you wanna learn more about blending modes, I recommend checking out, uh, just getting on Google and looking it up. But the blending modes, there's a lot of them built in. As I hover, it will uh, basically apply that or give you a preview of it. Now, keep in mind, the mask is only applying to the sky, so it's only gonna show in the sky. So some of these blend modes aren't gonna show in this example, but you can kind of see what's happening. And in fact, I'm just gonna reset the mask. 
so that this uh, entire use of the filter is across the entire photo, I should say. That way you can see the blending modes better. So now when I hover over blending modes, you can see it's gonna show across the entire photo. So just keep that in mind. If you have a mask applied, it's only gonna show where the mask is. And I'm gonna talk about masks here in a second um, at a high level. But that's blending modes, but you also have the ability here to click apply to, and that, as it says here, limits the filter to certain color or tonal ranges, and that's gonna apply the blend mode uh, selectively. So again, something to experiment with, something that I don't really use a lot, to be honest, but it is there if you wanna use it. Now, I'm gonna go back in here, and I wanna talk about masking. So this little square here represents the mask. White reveals, black conceals. Remember down on this one, if you look at this mask, you can click on the masking menu and click view, and it'll show you the mask. So here, uh, white reveals, black conceals. So anything in white, the edit is being revealed or shown on. Anything in black, it's not being shown on. So up here, we have the sky. So I'm gonna go back in here and then mask AI. I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna grab that sky again and hit apply, and you'll notice something that nothing happened, and that's because I'm in paint out mode. I need to be in paint in mode. So you gotta pay attention to that. So I'm gonna click that to paint in. It's gonna reverse it. And if you take a look at the mask now, there's the mask, white reveals, black conceals. Remember, I'm in mask AI and I chose sky and paint in. So in other words, go to the sky and paint in whatever my edits are in this version of dynamic contrast. And my edits are all these negative usages, so it makes it really smooth. While we're here, I wanna point out a couple of things. You've got all these tools here where you can invert the mask. So if I wanted to flip it, I could flip it and apply the mask to the bottom of the photo, you know, the foreground instead of the sky. I don't in this case, I'm gonna go ahead and flip it back. You got luminosity masking. I've already clicked on view to view the mask. You click it again to hide that, to go back to your regular photo view. Reset the mask, copy or paste the mask. So if I uh, use mask AI, but then I refine it and customize it and get it perfectly specific to whatever, I might not wanna have to redo that if I wanna use that same mask again. So I can just copy it, open another filter, and then paste it. So it gives you a lot of flexibility there. Now, the other thing is there's these masking options down here that allow you to control a mask. Let me go back to view, and we're not gonna get into this in depth. Uh, at a high level, density is just gonna either increase or decrease the density there. So less of the mask is being applied in the area that's gray, right? If it's black, there's no mask. If it's gray, it's slight mask. If I go zero density, then the mask is applying everywhere, right? So something to consider. Feathering is just gonna soften up those edges and blur them, so it allows you to kind of fade the effect. But one of the things that I wanna point out, this is one of my favorite features in On One, is you have these levels here. And these levels, as you can see, these apply to specific tonal areas. So you got shadows, you got midtones, and you got highlights. And basically, when you start dragging these, you can see what's happening to the edge of the mask. It's getting tighter and crisper and a little bit more sharp. Look at that, how much sharper that is along that edge. And, uh, you know, as, as opposed to what it looked like beforehand, which was, let me just reset these. It looked like that. So it kind of blurred along the edge and wasn't super specific. And anywhere there's gray, you're getting a little bit of the effect versus white gets all of it, black gets none of it. But this basically allows you to tighten up that mask and really get a really crisp edge, which comes in super, super handy. Helps you really refine your mask. Take your time, be careful, experiment. I'll come back and do more tutorials on masking. But I wanted to point that out and I wanted to point out this entire section because it's super powerful and super important because that's really one of the key things about filters is you probably most of the time don't wanna apply an effect across an entire photo. You wanna be specific, that's where masking comes in. Super Select AI and Mask AI are gonna let you target specific areas, but still there are times when you need to refine it. And some of these tools down here like levels and windows and even color range masking, all these things can help you be very targeted and specific, in other words, give you all the control that you wanna have. Okay, there's one more thing to talk about here, and that is this upper section right up here around uh, where it says add filter. There's also an opacity slider there. That opacity is for all the filters in the stack. So let me add another filter just to get a little bit more something going on here. I'm gonna add sunshine, and you'll notice it's got presets, it's got opacity, it's got the gear icon for blending modes, it's got different sliders, and it's got even more uh, potential kind of presets or looks here. I'm gonna go with strong. I'm gonna apply that across the entire photo. In other words, the mask is completely white. White reveals, black conceals, there's no black. I didn't pick any of the sections in Mask AI. I'm gonna leave that alone and supply that to the entire photo. By the way, I think I kind of forgot to mention this, but um, this little dot here allows you to turn on or off, kind of toggle on or off the filter itself. So if I just wanted to see what the sunshine filter just added to my photo, I can turn that off. 
that's what my photo looked like before sunshine and that's what it looks like now so that's the on off switch for each filter and you can do these individually you can say well what did that do okay i kind of like yeah i like it better when it's a little crispier down on the ground let me look at the sky softer well there it is i can see a little bit of noise i like it better like that and then of course sunshine i just did that there it was before and there it is now and maybe i'll add one other thing let's say i'll go get color enhancer and let's try a preset for sky and that made a lot of blue in the sky which is exactly what i wanted so let's say i've got all these and that's also global i didn't do anything right the mask is all white so i can turn all these off if i wanted to and just have a look at my photo before that was my base photo with a slight bump in exposure because it was kind of dark. Then I added dynamic contrast positive into the ground. I did negative dynamic contrast to soften the sky. I added sunshine filter across the entire photo and I added color enhancer across the entire photo. So now I've got that, it looks pretty good. And this is where my master opacity comes in. This is gonna control the opacity of all those filters combined. So if I go all the way to zero, I've basically turned off every filter there is right whereas at 100 i'm getting the full effect of all these filters based on the adjustments that i made in each individual filter if you ever get to the end of an edit and think you know that's a little too much um the opacity slider for all these filters is a great way you can come in here and say maybe i should do 70. maybe 70 is a little bit gentler implementation of this look that sort of thing so that's master opacity now you've also got the ability to save all this as a preset you can just click this button, it'll come up, say, say preset. You can name it, pick the folder you wanna put it in, all that. I'll probably cover presets in a future video. Uh, and then you've also got masking here, and that masking option is similar, but not the same. If you click on that, that is masking for all the filters below, but you don't have mask AI and things like that, so you have to be manual with, uh, with your edits there. And then also you've got blend modes here, and this is also blending options for all the stuff in the stack. So that's really how that works. And in a nutshell, that's how the effects tab works. Lots of power, lots of control, lots of things to think about, lots of little nuances. And there's probably more to cover that maybe I forgot, but that's the basics of how I approach it and the things that I think about and how I use the filter tab or the effects tab, I guess, technically, to add filters to my photos, customize the look of them in order for me to get the look that I want when I'm done editing my photo, which is really what it's all about. So. Hope this helps my friends. Check out that playlist if you're not familiar with On One and you want to see more about On One 2023. Thanks for hanging out, my friends. I appreciate you guys coming by. You guys take care. I'll be back soon with another video. And until then, adios.